Hello and good day everyone. This is one of your guidance counselors here in Mangalda National High School. My name is Mrs. Melissa Ines de Vera de Guia. With the support of our guidance coordinator 3 and the office head, Madam Maria Amor Vena Evangelista Biagtan, and the help of our administrative aides, Madam Evangeline Malanom and Madam uh, Justine Therese A. Zamora. This is another lecture discussion on our continuing day two of our child protection program and anti-bullying campaign program 2023. So my topic this day is kindness part three. If you have already watched, part one is on kindness in general. Part two is on kindness, specifically on saying thank you or the gratitude webinar. And today, we are going to have part three, which is saying sorry and how to forgive. Okay, let's go on to the first slide. Let's define first what is sorry. According to Wikipedia, there are two definitions of what the word sorry means spelled S-O-R-R-Y. Number one, it is a feeling of distress, especially through sympathy with someone else's misfortune. Like when we say, I was sorry to hear about what happened to your family. So you are sympathizing, you are in distress because of the misfortune experienced by another person. The second definition of sorry is feeling regret or you are penitent of what you were what you did wrong or when you hurt someone through probably your words or actions like for example we use that word to mean he said he was sorry he had upset me okay so today's discussion is mainly focused on the second sorry but to give you an example of the difference between the two we'll have the next slide love means never having to say you are sorry there was this 1970s movie entitled love story it was starring the late ryan o'neill and the female protagonist is ali mcgraw and this movie love story is a 1970 american romantic drama film written by eric Segal who was also the author of the best-selling 1970 novel of the same title. There was a scene there where the female lead had cancer and was telling the male lead, who's gonna cook your breakfast? Who's gonna clean the oven? Who's gonna clean the toilet? And she broke down and said, I'm sorry, I can't be with you anymore. And the male protagonist lead said, no, don't say sorry, because love means never, never having to say you're sorry. Love means never having to say you're sorry is what comforted the female lead. Okay, And this is an example of the definition number one. That is, we are sorry for the misfortune of others. The next one Next slide means, love means saying sorry. That is the second example. It's the kindest thing we can do and we can offer when we hurt someone intentionally or unintentionally. We tell the person you're sorry for what you did, even if it wasn't on purpose, even if we didn't mean it, na bigla lang tayo, nabitawan natin ng isang salita na hindi muna nag-isip or nakasampal tayo ng ating kamag-anak o kaibigan or we were able to do and say things that we never really meant to do or say. Number two, love means saying sorry. We own or own what you did without trying to explain it away. It takes away from an apology if you follow up with an excuse or an explanation to why you did what you did. Let them know you regret it. So say just sorry, period. 
wala nang kasi, wala nang but. Kasi nagja-justify ka lang ng iyong apology. And that is not sincere. Next slide, please. Love means saying sorry. It's the kindest thing we can do when we hurt someone intentionally or unintentionally. And some sorries are just words. Like we have uh, from English as a second language dot com. There are so many words or sentences that will express the word I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, ever so sorry. I had that wrong. I owe you an apology. I take full responsibility. I wanted to tell you that I'm sorry. I'd like to apologize. My apologies. Or how stupid and careless or thoughtless of me. I apologize. I hope you can forgive me. I sincerely apologize. I want to apologize. I was wrong on that. I'm so very terribly sorry. My fault. My bad. Bro, I'm sorry. Some say it professionally. Okay? How to say sorry professionally? We say, sorry about that. It was my fault. My apologies for? What were you apologizing for? I apologize for? I love you. And this is, I owe you an apology. I was wrong on that. I sincerely apologize. I understand that X has caused Y, etc. I should have. I shouldn't have. Please excuse my ignorance. I take full responsibility. That was wrong of me. Please accept or please accept my warm apologies or sincere apologies. It truly, really, sincerely, I truly, really, sincerely regret. Okay. But those are just words. Okay, If we owe someone an apology, how do we make things right? Okay, These are the eight tips on how to say sorry or how to apologize sincerely. Number one, understand why you are apologizing. To make a good apology, you'll want to first have a good understanding of where you went wrong. Regret is a key element of effective apologies, but you'll probably find it difficult to express sincere regret when you don't know what you regret doing. So ano ba talaga yung ginawa mo? Tapos talaga bang kasalanan mo? And then you you express pagsisisi, no? Na pinagsisisian ko, I regret it. Kaya nagiging sincere ang apology when we recognize that we were in the wrong. Next slide, please. Another one is start with I'm sorry, period. No? Apologies that contain qualifiers or justifications typically won't get the job done. Hint, following I'm sorry with but is never the way to go. I'm sorry, kaya lang ikaw kasi, nanisi ka pa. Okay? When you rationalize your actions, you're essentially passing the blame to another person. This sends the message that you don't think you did anything wrong and gives your apology a ring of superficiality. Plastic lang. Okay. Even honest justifications can negate the sincerity of an apology you really mean. Okay? Kahit na justified talaga, tapos sinabi mo pa yun, nag-apologize ka, tapos sinabi mo pa yun, parang negative pa rin, no? Hindi sincere ang dating ng iyong sorry. Next, number three, you take responsibility for your actions. Acknowledging your mistake can go a long way toward helping you convey remorse. But don't stop there. A sincere apology also involves empathy for the person you hurt. And it's important to acknowledge the pain your actions caused. Because here's where a good understanding of your actions will come in handy. Okay. Consider these two kinds of apologies. Number one, I shouldn't have commented on your jihad. I was curious about your religion. But that's no excuse for making a disrespectful comment. 
I didn't consider how that remark might make you feel and I'm sorry for hurting you and making you uncomfortable. So you'll notice it contains an explanation but it is not a justification. I was curious about your religion kaya tinanong ko kung ano yung hijab. No? Recognizing the difference between explanations and justifications can help you make a much more sincere and effective apology. Lalo na nung sinabi mong I didn't consider how that remark might make you feel. So nag empathize ka dun sa person. Hindi ko na-realize na magiging uncomfortable ka or magiging uh, masaktan ka or sensitive ka, ka pala sa ganong comments. I'm so sorry. So, that makes it very sincere. The fourth one, next page. We focus on the impact of your actions, not your intent. Sure, you didn't intend to hurt anyone. Still, at the end of the day, your intent often matters less than the impact of your actions. Consider this situation. You lied to your best friend about their partner's cheating because you wanted to protect them. But by holding back this information, you denied them the chance to make an informed decision about their relationship. You also betrayed their trust which caused them even more pain. So yung beshi mo, tiwalang tiwala sa boyfriend niya, halimbawa, or sa girlfriend niya. But nakita mo siya nakikikiss, no? lips to lips, nakikipaghalikan sa iba. Okay? And you know na nag-cheat yung partner ng friend mo, but you kept silent. At sino ba ang friend mo? Diba? So kapag hindi mo sinabi, you deprive that person to decide on their relationship, yung status nila. Okay? Matagal na pala siyang niloloko, for example. Okay? But still, you kept quiet. So, yung sense of betrayal na ma-feel ng friend mo, once nalaman niya na alam mo at hindi mo sinabi, mas makaka-aggravate sa sakit na mararamdaman niya kung sana nasabi mo. When you apologize, you might mention you only wanted to protect them. But you'll want to follow up this explanation by acknowledging that your dishonesty ended up doing the exact opposite. So, nakipag-break siya at nakipag-break din siya sa'yo as friend niya kasi you betrayed their trust. Your apology should center on the pain you caused them, not the good intentions behind your actions. Okay? Ayaw mo silang masaktan but in the end, yung silence mo betrayed their trust in you. Okay, next. Number five, take step to make amends. O, di ba kapag ka, na, nakagawa tayo ng masama sa kapwa natin, we make things sa pag-sorry natin, gagawa tayo ng bagay na makakapagpalubag loob. Okay? Effective apologies involves an effort to begin repairing the situation. Sometimes, reparative behavior is pretty clear. Such as, example, if you borrowed your sister's clothes without asking permission and got it filthy inside and out, your apology might involve paying to have it cleaned or replaced. Okay? Sorry, hindi ko na ipaalam sa'yo yung blouse mo. O, oh, ito, palitan ko na lang. Sorry talaga. No? Or, if you trusted or if you rushed through a work assignment, and gave your teacher a report containing incorrect information, you might commit to staying late to fix your mistakes or returning back with a more detailed report still on time. Sorry po, teacher. I forgot. Fake news pala yung pinagkuhanan ko. Papalitan ko po, i-return ko kaagad. Okay? So, things like that. Other times, you might need to ask, what can I do to make things right? Then show them you truly regret your actions by doing what they ask. Okay? So, kung hindi mo talaga maalo, paano ba ako makaka-make up for what I did? No? How should I make things right? How should I bring back a relationship back to its footing? So, tingnan natin kung reasonable yung kanilang demand. We can grant it. No? Next. 
Number six, don't overdo it. Generally speaking, the apology should fit the mistake, excessive prep reparations, or behavior that goes above and beyond what they ask of you might help ease your guilt, but it won't necessarily have any benefits for the person you wronged. Okay. It might even lead them to doubt your sincerity. After all, you didn't listen to their request. For example, say someone stole your friend's bike when you borrowed it. Hiniram mo, tapos... Uh, yung friend mo, hiniram din sa'yo, pinahiram mo din, and then nawala niya. And left it unlocked kasi. Okay, so they send you a link to a second-hand version of the same bike and ask you to purchase it as a replacement. So, ikaw yung responsible for it. Sabi, ito yung klaseng bike na gusto namin. Ganitong-ganito yung nawala, ganitong-ganito yung gusto daming replacement. Pero anong ginawa mo? Instead, you choose an entirely different and much more expensive new model in an effort to convey how truly sorry you are. When you give them the new bike, they don't attempt to hide their disappointment and annoyance. Kasi lumihis ka sa dapat mong ibabayad na sila ang may request. Parang hindi mo na nga na-take responsibility yung pag-aari nila na, na hiniram mo. Nung pang pagpapalitan mo, hindi mo pa rin in-honor yung gusto nila. So, you overdid it. Okay? So, your apology might not mean that much to them. Okay. Seventh, ask for forgiveness. Simply lang, di ba? Requesting forgiveness is an important part of the apology because it gives the person you wrong some agency in the situation. In other words, asking for forgiveness tells them you don't assume they'll automatically forgive you. The process of forgiveness can take time and you may need to do some work like making amends and addressing problematic behaviors in order to earn it. Don't forget the importance of self-forgiveness along the way. So later on in this chapter, I will give you uh, pointers on how to forgive naman. But for those bullies out there who want to say sorry, ito yon. Keep in mind that forgiveness isn't guaranteed no matter how sincere your apology or your sorry is. That said, you're more likely to earn forgiveness by making it clear you're truly repentant of your actions and made as, and make a serious effort to change. Okay? So, dun siguro magkaka uh, bunga yung iyong sorry, mafo-forgive ka, kung sincere at especially na ito ay importante para sa sa'yo. Okay? At para sa pinag uh, kautangan mo, if ever. Number eight, the last one, know when you shouldn't apologize. Apologies can heal damage in relationships after mistakes or thoughtless behavior. But apologizing when you did nothing wrong simply to prevent conflict can affect your sense of self-worth and ultimately damage you. Parang minsan yung away magkakaibigan na, Sige, sorry na, sorry na, sige, kasalanan ko na, sige, kasalanan ko na lahat. So, sorry na. Parang ganun. Para lang you avoid the conflict. But the conflict wasn't resolved. No? Yung issue, hindi na resolved, hindi na solusyonan. So it stays there. Okay? So the hurt will fester and the trust that's broken might not be repaired again. Here's something to consider. If a friend, partner, or family member regularly expects you to take the blame for things you didn't do, they aren't accepting responsibility for their mistakes or making amends for their wrongs. Kung palagi mong pinagtatakpan ang isang kapamilya, kaibigan, or very close beshi or partner para lang matakpan yung kanilang pagkukulang, you will never correct their mistakes. You are perpetuating their mistakes. You might think offering the first apology will encourage them to do the same. But it's still best to avoid accepting blame when you aren't at fault. One situation where you have nothing to apologize for 
rejecting someone romantically. In fact, research trusted source suggests that apologizing when you reject someone may make them feel worse. Okay? So sa mga naniligaw o nililigawan, no? Kung hindi nyo type yung taong lumiligaw, say it, no? Sabihin mo, pasensya ka na. Hindi ikaw ang gusto kong lalaki. Hindi ikaw ang gusto kong boyfriend, girlfriend. Diretsahan, no? Huwag niyong paasahin, huwag niyong, huwag din kayo mag-apologize. Because you can't help how you feel. Dapat kung mahal ka din niya, tatanggapin niya yung decision mo because it's what you feel, no? Hindi para sa kanya. So, they won't make asa, no? They won't make hope ya, no? Hoping na mag-change ka ng isip. Okay. So, a better option, be open and kind. Okay? Kindness part 3. Alright? So, better option is be open and kind. Prangkahan, straight to the point. Okay. So, the bottom line, next page. Your apology might begin with words, but it doesn't end with them. So, pwede kang sabing, I'm sorry, I apologize, sorry po. But it doesn't end there. Once you've spoken your apology, you have the opportunity to live it by reaffirming boundaries, working to reestablish trust, and examining your behavior for other opportunities to grow. Okay? So, nag-sorry ka na, sabi mo, ang kalakip ng sorry ay hindi na mauulit. Okay? So, you, you set a, a goal for yourself. Okay? Hindi na marirepeat ang same mistake. Hindi na masasabi same hurting words. Hindi na magagawa same hurting actions. And then, we reestablish the trust that was broken. And then, other things will follow. Yung opportunities for you to make up. Yung opportunities for you to uh, make bawi. Okay? These changes when made with sincerity can help you earn forgiveness. But they can also help you avoid making the same mistakes again. Kasi nangako ka. Sa experience namin as guidance counselors here in Mangalda National High School, once na may nagsabi na ng sorry, parang naiibsan yung hurt. So nagkakaroon na peace pa. Okay? So meron tayong promissory note. Okay? Meron ding mga teachers halimbawa na nagkamali ire-report ng mga bata at pag nagsorry sila agad sa parents kung nasaktan nila yung mga anak nila na lalambot agad ang puso ng magulang pero kapag nagmatigas si teacher sabi niya ako ang tama yung anak niyo ang mali uh, the the more the parents will be provoked okay to file cases against them so, ganun din sa mga bata. ba Pag nag-sorry na, oh, peace na tayo ha, oh, wala na yun ha. Oh, and then, congrats, oh, and then shake hands, and then, at peace sila ulit. Okay. How about, next page, when the hurt was intentional, like a bullying case, how do you apologize? Let's take the most tragic and the worst probably scenario in bullying. You remember the case of Kenneth Lalata. I think this was January 15, 2019. Okay? Ko kung before pandemic yun or after 2018. Okay. Nung namatay si Kenneth Lalata due to bullying, no? namatayan tayo ng isa na grade 11 at tatlo ang nakulong na grade 12. It is one of the darkest moments in the history of Mangaldan National High School. And the administration, the teachers, all your mentors, non-teaching personnel cannot say sorry enough. Kasi we lost four under our care. How can you apologize for causing death? Paano ka magsosorry sa pag-cause ng kamatayan? No? Can your sorry bring back the dead to life? Pwede bang buhayin ulit ng sorry ang namatay na? Sorry won't be enough. Sorry will fall on deaf ears. Yung mga naunang teachers na nakidalamhati sa family, hindi sila pinansin. No? Sorry will not mean anything. 
But sorry is a good start to appease the ill feelings. And the reparation takes a long time to lessen the grief. Even now, pumupunta dito ang family every January 15 at nagtitirik sila ng kandila. Okay? We don't want the same thing to happen again in Mangaldan National High School. So please, stop bullying and make peace with yourself and your world. Gawin nating safe ang ating environment, ang workspace, at ang ating learning space sa Mangaldan National High School, ang ating social media space sa ating mga gadgets. Okay? So, I leave you with one quote. Next page. An apology is the super glue of life. It can repair just about anything. This is by Lynn Johnston. And with this, I say thank you for participating and listening. Pwede muna kayong mag-break, mag-pause as I prepare the next slide for the topic, How to Forgive. So kung naturuan natin ang uh, hopefully not uh, magiging bully at uh, tayong mga victim halimbawa ay pinagsorihan, pinagsabihan ng sorry, nag-apologize ang bully sa atin bilang victims, how do we forgive? Okay. So these are my references. Thank you. Okay. Right. So next slide would be how to forgive. Okay. So part two, forgiveness is healing, especially forgiving yourself. Okay. When we forgive, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. So when we forgive, we break out from the emotion of powerlessness to becoming powerful and peaceful. Okay? Alam nyo kung tayo yung inagrabyado at nagsorry sa atin yung nagagrabyado sa atin. We have the power. no? The power to give the gift of forgiveness or to suspend the gift. Pwede nating ibigay o ipagkait. Okay? So you have the power to forgive. But take note, forgive others not because they deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. Diba? Kapag ka may tanim ka pa ng sama ng loob, may kinikimkim ka pang galit, hinanakit, sino ang nahihirapan? Yun bang nanakit sa'yo? O ikaw na nagnonurture, nag-aalaga ng sama ng loob? Okay. At this point, next page, I would like you to uh, move on to a very short test. No? Kung na-hurt kayo, paano kayo mag-react? This is the transgression motivation scale. And this test is just for 12 items. So bring out your homeroom guidance notebook and the direction is as follows. Recall a person who hurt you and on the blank spaces, place or please indicate your current thoughts and feelings about their, this person by choosing or placing number one, if you strongly disagree, number two, if you disagree, number three, if you are neutral, you neither agree nor disagree, Number four, if you agree. And number five, if you strongly agree in the following sentences. Okay? So, are you ready? Item number one, I will make him pay or her pay. Ito yung thoughts and feelings nyo dun sa nakasakit sa inyo na iniisip nyo. Okay? Number two, so, anong ilalagay nyo sa number 1? One? 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Next item. Number 2. I am trying to keep as much distance 
between us as possible. One, two, three, four, or five. Number three, I wish that something bad will happen to him or to her. One, two, three, four, or five. Number four, I am living as if she or he doesn't exist. One, two, three, four, or five. Number five, I don't trust him. I don't trust her. One, two, three, four, or five. Number six, I want her or I want him to get what she or what he deserves. One, two, three, four, or five. Number seven, I am finding it difficult to act warmly towards her or towards him. One, two, three, four, or five. Number eight, I am avoiding her. I am avoiding him. What's your answer? One, two, three, four, or five. Number nine, I am going to get even. What's your answer? One, two, three, four, or five. Number ten, I cut off the relationship with him or her. One, two, three, four, or five. Number eleven. I want to see her, to see him, hurt and miserable. One, two, three, four, or five. And number thirteen. I withdraw from her or from him. Your answer? One, two, three, four, or five. Okay, did you answer all the 12 items down? Okay, let's have the scoring and interpretation. Okay, you total your scores for seven avoidance items. That is number two, number four, number five, number seven, number eight, and number 12. I-add nyo lang kung ano yung sinulat nyong score. Kung 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. I-add nyo lang yung items 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 12. Tama? Okay. 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8. And 12. Okay. The mean of American adults is around 12.6. So, median natin ay, if you scored 17.6 or more, you are the most avoidant. Third, if you scored 22 or, sorry, uh, palitan natin yun. The mean of American adults is around 12.6. Pag sinabi natin mean, that's the average. Okay? So, kapag average, nasa middle. If you scored 17.6 or more, you are the most avoidant third. Okay? Pangalawa kayo sa middle. If you scored 22.8 or more, you are the most avoidant 10%. If you scored high on this scale, the forgiveness exercise should be useful for you. Okay? Later on, I will uh, guide you to the five-step process on forgiveness. Okay? Ngayon, Ito yung mga taong pag na-hurt sila ng isang tao, they avoid that person. So, kaya avoidance motivation sa inyo. Ngayon, kung kayo naman yung na-hurt, tapos kayo ay vengeful, ito yung revenge motivation. That is on five items, number one, number three, number six, number nine, and number eleven. Okay? 2, 4, 5. If you scored 7.7, .7, you are at average. If you scored 11 or more, you are the most vengeful third. And above 13.2, you are the most vengeful 10%. 
Okay, so maaaring sabihin yung American standard yan, ma'am, no? Gumagawa tayo ng Filipino standard at mga high standard. Kaya, please bear with me. If you are so high on vengefulness, you may find the forgiveness exercise very useful. Okay, ano ba itong forgiveness exercise? Okay, so maaaring mag-react ang taong nasaktan in two ways, no? Kung nagtatanim ka talaga ng galit, you avoid that person who hurt you. Kung sobra kang galit, you ask for revenge, no? Sana doon ka sa you make peace, no? Puntahan mo yung tao, i-bring out mo yung sama ng loob mo, kung bakit masama ang loob mo sa kanya, na nasaktan ka sa sinabi niya o sa ginawa niya, but you are willing to forgive, uh, pag-usapan niyo. Okay. But since tayo ay nasa forgiveness, tingnan natin kung paano tayo makaka-forgive sa taong nakahurt sa atin. Okay. So, let's pause for some definitions. No? Forgiving defined, forgiving is an adjective and it means ready and willing to forgive. Forgiving. She's a very forgiving person. No? Madali siyang maka-accept maka ng sorry, apology, at marunong siyang uh, makamove on after na mag-sorry. So, Taylor was in a very forgiving mood. That's the uh, example for forgiving as an adjective. Okay, how about forgiveness? It is a noun and it entails the action or process of forgiving or being forgiven. An example statement is, she is quick to ask forgiveness when she has overstepped the line. May mga taong ready na mag-say sorry. May mga taong hindi gustong mag-sorry. May mga taong napaka-bagal, napakatagal bago mag-say sorry at accept na sila ay mali. At ganun din sa mga tao kung mag-forgive. No? May taong madaling mag-forgive, kalimutan na, no? parang walang masamang tinapay, no? accept na lahat, kahit sino, kahit basta sorry sila sa kanya, or kahit hindi mag-sorry, sige na, forgive na, accept na kita, ganun. Meron ding napakahirap mag-forgive. So, iba-iba tayo ng timpla. No? Okay, tingnan natin, how do we forgive? Okay. Forgiving through the step REACH. The acronym R-E-A-C-H. Okay. Consider this scenario. Mama's been murdered. There was blood on the carpet, on the walls. Blood covering. On New Year's morning of 1996, the most awful of phone calls came from his brother, Mike, to Everett Worthington. Everett Worthington is a psychologist who has written the defining book on forgiveness. When De Dr. Worthington arrived in Knoxville, Tennessee, he found that his aged mother has been beaten to death with a crowbar and a baseball bat. Okay. Alam niyo yung crowbar, yung pag-alis ng tornillo, ano, malaki, then baseball bat. Uh, aged mother yan. Ah. She was raped with a wine bottle. So ipinasok sa ari niya ang bote ng wine. And her house was trashed. Parang ninakawan siya. Parang may naghanap ng something. His successful struggle to forgive would be an inspiration coming from any quarter. Coming from a leading investigator of forgiveness, it dwells in the high country of moral teaching and well recommended to any reader who wants to forgive but cannot. Okay? So Worthington describes a five-step process, albeit not an easy or quick one, he calls REACH. R-E-A-C-H. What does this acronym mean? Next page. R for recall. Recall the hurt in as objective way as you possibly can. Do not think of the other person as evil. Do not wallow in self-pity. Take deep, slow, 
and calming breaths as you visualize the event. Worthington conjured up a possible scenario to visualize. I imagined how the two youths might feel as they prepared to rob a darkened house. Boy one, this one, nobody's home. It's pitch black inside. Boy two, no car in the driveway. Looks like the house is clear. Boy one, they are probably at a New Year's party. They could not have known that mama did not drive and does not have a car. Boy two, oh no, I've been seen. Where did this woman come from? This is terrible. She can even recognize me. I'm going to jail. This old woman will ruin my life. So kinunjure ni Worthington yung scenario na ganun yung usap ng dalawang bata, adolescents na nag-break in sa house ng nanay niya, ninakawan siya, nirape ng wine bottle, pinatay. Yung isa ang armas, crowbar, yung isa ang armas ay bat. So ang balak lang nila ay magnakaw. Hindi nila balak na patayin ang nanay niya. Yun ang sinaryong inisip niya as he recalled the incident. Okay, next page. E sa reach ay empathize. Okay, try to understand from the perpetrator's viewpoint why this person hurt you. This is not easy but make up a plausible story that the transgressor might tell if challenged to explain. Remember the following. When others feel their survival is threatened, they will hurt innocence. So, yung imagination ng bata, no, naku, na-recognize ako, nakilala ako nitong matanda, patayin na bago niya masira ang buhay ko, i-report niya ako sa pulis, makukulong ako. So many things and their survival is threatened. No? Imagine makukulong siya, wala na siyang freedom. Then, let's also empathize with this fact. People who attack others are themselves usually in a state of fear, worry, and hurt. So yung mga taong nananakit din ay may nasa state ng takot, pag-aalala, at nasaktan din. No? Kaya consider natin din ang isang bully kung saan ang pinanggagalingan niya. Yung mga takot niya, mga fears niya, mga worry niya, pag-aalala niya, mga hurts niya, kung paano siya nasaktan. The situation a person find himself in and not his underlying personality can lead to hurting. So, hindi niya personalidad ang pumatay o manakit, pero yung sitwasyon na kinaroroonan niya was the one, the underlying factor kung bakit siya nakagawa ng mali. ba diba? Naipit. No? Kasi hindi dapat nandito itong matanda eh, but andito na siya. So, people often don't think when they hurt others. They just lash out. No? So, nagpanik at pinatay. Okay. A, next page. A for altruistic. The altruistic gift of forgiveness is another difficult step. First, you recall a time you transgressed. Meron ba kayong naiisip na kayo din yung nagkamali? Okay? Kayo din yung nakasakit. At kayo din yung nagsay ng sorry. And then you felt guilty. And then you were forgiven. Tapos yung, yung, yung lumuwag yung pakiramdam mo, oh salamat, na, napatawad na niya ako. There was a gift given to you by another person because you needed it and you were grateful for this gift. So giving this gift usually makes us feel better. As the saying goes, if you want to be happy for an hour, take a nap. For a day, go fishing. For a month, buy new shoes. For a year, get an inheritance. For a lifetime, help someone. But we do not give this gift out of self-interest. Hindi mo ibibigay yung forgiveness mo, no? O sige, nagsusorry itong taong ito, sige, i-grant ko. Okay? Para nang sa ganun maluwagan ako. Hindi. It is for the trespassers on good. 
para makalma na siya, para hindi na siya mag-worry, para maibalik yung friendship namin, para hindi na siya mag-alala pa. No? So, you still empathize with the person and you are very altruistic. Okay? So, that is genuine giving of forgiveness. Okay. So, next page. Dalawa. C for the rich acronym is for commit and H for hold. Okay. C for commit muna tayo. Commit yourself to forgive publicly. In Worthington's groups, kasi psychology siya, may group therapy sessions siya, his clients write a certificate of forgiveness. Ano ang counterpart nito sa guidance? Promissory note. No? Na ako na nakasakit ay humihingi ng tawad kay sa nagawa kong kasalanan. Kapag naulit pa muli ito, Tatanggapin ko ang anumang parusang ibibigay sa akin ng punong guro. Ang principal natin ang makapagbibigay ng punishment. At dalawa lang ang klase ng punishment. Okay? Suspension and expulsion. Ngayon, sa ating pag-commit, kailangan may kontrata, certificate of forgiveness. Ako si ay nagpo-forgive na kay Write a letter of forgiveness to the offender. Write it in their diary. Write a poem or a song or tell a trusted friend that what they have done. Napatawad ko na si ganito. These are all contracts of forgiveness that can lead to the final step. At ano yung final step? H for hold. Nung ibig sabihin nun, hold on to forgiveness. This is another difficult step because memories of the event will surely recur. No? Ang, ang utak natin, hindi nakaprogram ang memory natin na sabihin natin, pause, pause, delete, delete. Hindi. Hindi siya computer. No? Yung mind natin, yung memory natin, uh, yung, yung kasabihang forgive and forget, maaari kang mag-forgive but sometimes it's very difficult to forget. Kasi yung memory bank natin, maliban lang kung maaga tayong ma-Alzheimer's, ma-dementia, no? Maaring ma-forgive natin. Pero, pag sa dementia and Alzheimer's cases, maalala niya yung noon-noon pa, hindi niya maalala yung short term, yung ngayon lang nangyari. Okay? So, hold on to forgiveness no matter how difficult this step is. Forgiveness is, a, is not an eraser, no? Hindi siya erasure, rather it's a change in the taglines that the memory carries, okay? So, for example, noon, ang, ang sabi ng mga uh, pamilya ni Kenneth ay, itong mga mamatay tao, no? Buong manghay, mamamatay tao. Siguro after four years or three years, ang sabi na nila ay, it was an unfortunate incident committed by just three persons hindi na buong manghay but it does not erase the memory it only changes the tagline no yung memory of that event it is important to realize that the memories do not mean unforgiveness ang ibig sabihin ng naaalala mo pa hindi ibig sabihin hindi ka makaforgive nakaforgive ka na hindi ka lang makaforget and it's not your fault kasi nga yun yung memory system mo. Uh, don't dwell vengefully though in your memories. And don't wallow in them. Huwag natin siyang i-baby. No? Those memories that are left buried and that are left uh, unsaid, untouched, undone, uh, we, if we can leave them behind, we, we do so. If we can't, let them be. No? Huwag natin silang i-baby. Huwag natin alagaan. Remind yourself that you have forgiven and read the document you composed. Imagine meron kang kontrata na pinirmahan na ikaw ay nag-forgive na. Okay? So hopefully the family of Kenneth will have forgiven. Okay? Why? Merong linya sa Bible, next page, and it is the parable of the unforgiving heart. Okay? So no matter kung na-broken heart ka, na-hurt ka ng isang tao, Broken na kasi. Maski anong stitch ang gagawin mo dun sa heart mo, hindi mo na maibabalik. 
to what it was before. Pero yung the parable of the unforgiving servant is narrated by Jesus and appears in the Gospel of Matthew. It explains the importance of forgiving others. The one who refuses to forgive others has no right to ask forgiveness from anyone, including the divine. Kaya may paborito ako sa Filipino custom natin na kung ang Diyos nga nakakapagpatawad, ako pa kaya, tao lang ako. So kapag hindi ka marunong magpatawad, you do not have the right, wala kang karapatan na magbeg din ng forgiveness sa iba, much less sa ating Father in Heaven. No? Baka hindi i-grant yan sa'yo because you have an unforgiving heart. Okay? So kung merong unrepentant, no? uh, hindi nagsosorry, meron din yung unforgiving. Ayaw mag-forgive. Okay? Including the divine, sabi. So kapag ka hindi tayo nagpatawad now, nabuhay tayo, pagdating natin ng heaven, tapos mag-ask tayo for forgiveness for something grievous that we did, baka hindi rin i-grant sa'yo. Paano ka? Di sa hell ka. For their own trespasses. No? Kasi hindi lang siya yung nakasakit sa ang may kasalanan. Ikaw din, no? At alam mo kung paano gaano kaimportante ang magpatawad. So for all my enemies, uh, imagine real or not, no? Or hindi ko alam na enemies ko, I forgive you. Okay? Yun na. Parang malapit ng undas ay Holy Week. Okay. So again, thank you for listening. Okay? Again, ang sabi uli ng Salawit Kain, to err is human, to forgive is divine. Thank you. God bless you. More power. This is again Mrs. Melissa Ines de Veredigia, one of your guidance counselors here in Mangaldan National High School together with the help of Ma'am Vanji Malanom and Ma'am Thiri, uh, Thiri, Justine Theris Zamora together with the blessing of our a guidance head, Madam Maria Amor Evangelista Biagtan. Happy learning, everyone. Hope you listen more to the topics of the others. And we practice peace. We, we avoid violence. We say sorry. We always say thank you. We also forgive. Be kind always. No? Make your nanay proud. Thank you. God bless you. Mabuhay.